Hello everyone, back at it again with another video today. We're out here, beautiful eastern Tennessee. Uh, we're approaching springtime, so um, I'm really uh, excited for that. So I know I have been absent from YouTube for a few weeks. Uh, number one, I've been very busy in school, doing something that I'm about to show you, also with work. So without further ado, I want to go ahead and show you the muzzleloader that I have built. It's not complete. The build is complete, but I have to stain it with walnut stain and also brown the barrel and do some brass polishing. But other than that, the muzzleloader is complete. And if I start coughing in this video a little bit, I'm doing this in one take, so I don't like to edit videos. I don't have time for that. So if I start to cough, excuse me, I just got over COVID about a week and a half ago, so excuse me for that. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. So this is the muzzleloader from SDI that they send. Uh, for you to build. This is the Shenandoah uh, muzzleloader from Traditions. It's a percussion cap uh, set trigger uh, system here. It's chambered in 50 caliber. I think it's a 1 to 66 twist, I believe. Um, I think it's on the barrel here somewhere. Uh, yeah, 1 and 66 twist. Uh, let me get a close up of all of this uh, for you so you can see. Now, <clears throat> there's a few things that I have done wrong on this <laughs> and a few things that i messed up on very greatly actually that i had to well let's say use some methods um that are not normal uh to fix this so i want to preface this by saying before i get into kind of the overall uh the overview of how i built this uh, but this is not easy um the reason why it's not easy is because it takes a lot of time it takes a lot of time and a lot of patience both i don't have <laughs> I don't have a lot of time and I don't have a lot of patience. Um, and by the way, YouTube, this is unloaded. Uh, we have no cap. Uh, we have no uh, cap on the nipple. And then we also have nothing in uh, the uh, barrel as well. Uh, so we're not shooting it today. We are going to do that, but I want to stain it and finish it before I, I do a test uh, shot on, on YouTube on here. But so let's just kind of go into the the overview of how I built this and and what systems and, and, and tasks I had to overcome and everything like that. So again, I want to preface this by saying this is my first time ever, ever building a muzzleloader. So, like this anyway. I put together things that were 100% inlet, didn't have to do anything. But this, this was not 100%. I had to do some inletting. I had to do some drilling, some tapping. This was not easy. This was honestly very hard. Um... Let's go ahead and start with week one of this assignment. Week one of this was to obviously unpack it, make sure that we had everything uh, that we needed. And then we had to inlet to the butt plate as well as the toe plate and the lock. So the lock wasn't very hard. It already came like 99% inlet. There was like a few stuff I had to shave off there, uh, but the lock is perfectly fine. Uh, the lock works great, by the way. I'll show you all that function stuff here in a second. The hardest part, or the first hardest part of this whole build, was inletting. <clears throat> I want to preface this by saying, inletting, if you've ever done it before and you're, you're pretty proficient in inletting, it's a very, very, very time-consuming, very hard thing to do. Um, inletting, by its definition, and I'm probably paraphrasing here, basically, um, there are pieces, brass, or metal parts that need to be fit to the wood of the firearm and you have to make sure that they fit properly and the way to do that is to inlet the wood which means to carve out or take away part of the wood to get it to fit in properly and so we had to inlet the butt plate and you're going to see that I messed up very badly and I'll explain here in a second so I had to inlet the butt plate there and as you can see that the toe plate now you're probably thinking well why does that look weird right in there? So, again, inletting is very complicated. Um, I work a full-time job and also in full-time school, and that's not an excuse. But what I'm saying is you have to be patient. You have to do this uh, very time accordingly. You have to take your time. And I don't have a lot of time to take. So, basically, we had to fit this brass butt plate to the stock, to the back butt, butt stock of the rifle. And in order to do that, um, I had to carve out sections of the butt plate. And if you're wondering why that looks like wood filler, 
that's because it is. <laughs> so I inlet way too much, basically. I'll just go ahead and say it. <clears throat> I inlet way too much. Um, for some reason, I, I wasn't... When I fit the brass piece to... Or the butt plate to the uh, butt stock, I figured I would just go ahead and drill the holes and then just sand it down to the brass, which is what I should have done. Okay? I know that I know that it would have been perfectly fine like that. However... The assignment requirements were to inlet the butt plate, not drill it, screw it in, install it, and then sand the wood down to the brass. We actually had to inlet it, okay? So I emailed my teacher, asked them, hey, you know, I don't really think I need to inlet here because I'm, number one, really still kind of confused on how inletting works. <laughs> and number two, I feel like I don't need to. Like, I feel like I'm going to mess it up. Why can't I just drill the... Uh, you know, uh, drill a pile of holes, screw the butt plate in, and then sand the wood down. Because keep in mind, this wood here was sticking out like this much, and up here sticking out. So it wasn't it wasn't completely uh, flush with the brass. And so the teacher said, "Hey, you know, we have to inlet it. It's part of the assignment requirements. Here's a video on how to inlet, which I I knew how to inlet because I've watched the videos. Uh, we're in school learning about it." Um, and they provide you this thing called inletting blue or inletting black. It's a basically like a non-drying paint. And what it does is, is when you put, like you'll basically, the, this, this butt plate here, this brass piece, I would take the agent with a paintbrush and, and wipe on there and then stick it onto the, the wood here and then take it off. Now, there will be transfer marks on there and it'll be part of that, that inletting agent. And what it does is it tells me how much I need to carve or where I need to carve out with wood gouges or, or um, you know, chisels or something like that. Now, again, I didn't really think I needed to do that, but the assignment requirements said I did. So I'm going to hoist it this way. You can see how much wood I cut off that didn't need to be cut off because you had to fit it this way, I'm sorry about the orientation of this video, you had to fit it this way, but you also had to fit it this way, and in here, and also there, but you had to make mind of this uh, little corner up here and everything, it was very, 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 very confusing. Now, people watching this video that have done this assignment before in this school, uh, you might have had an easier time than me, hey man, we all learn, we all go through things, we all make mistakes, and I'm totally okay with that. I'm actually very proud of this, by the way, this isn't just a you know, this sucks. <laughs> I'm actually very proud of this. So you had to inlet the butt plate and the toe plate. And you could see the toe plate didn't really need much, but I did put a little bit of wood filler right there because I, I chipped out way too much. Uh, the brass butt plate came out like here and I had to file it down and get it down. Um, but as you can see, just want to show you how much wood I cut off there that I didn't need to cut off. That's all that wood filler you see. Okay. Um, then obviously we had to inlet the lock for that assignment and that was it. Okay. The next assignment was another very, very hard part of this, uh, this whole build. It was to install the barrel, the barrel tenons, tenon pins, as well as the, uh, the ramrod piece here, um, which is the rear thimble and you've got your front, uh, your front, your front rear thimble. I can't remember which one's front and rear, but, uh, you've got your thimbles here. Uh, they basically hold the ramrod in place. Um, but the tenon pins, basically they were little, they almost kind of look like your your rear sight here. Or, uh, yeah, your rear sight here. And you had to drill a hole, and there's, there's <laughs> no margin for error here. Uh, if you make a mistake, you're, you're, you're done for. You're messed, you're screwed up. Uh, but you had to basically drift the tenon, uh, the tang, the, the tenon pieces in, the barrel tenons, and then you had to measure on the stock where the tenon was, where the middle of the tenon was. Then you had to drill a hole and then fit your tenon pins in. Basically, the tenons and the tenon pins keep the stock or keep the barrel in place with the stock so it won't fall out. So the barrel won't fall out of the whole entire gun. So, with that being said, as I was saying, it was a very hard process. Uh, this, again, was very time-consuming, very stressful because there's no room for error. Now, 
I made an error. <laughs> as you can see, I drilled a little too low, and I drilled a little too low over here as well. So I had to re-drill those holes, and I haven't filled them in with wood putty or wood filler yet, but I will. Um, but I had to re-drill that part. Now, it's funny, on this side, I got it all perfect, um, as you can see there. Well, that one I had to redo, but this one right here, perfect. So, you know, it's very weird how those tendon pins uh, go in because... Again, very, very small margin for error there, okay? Uh, after we did that, uh, we had to uh, inlet and fit in the rear thimble here. This wasn't hard. Basically, just screwed it in, or what we had to install it, like fit it in, and then screw a hole, uh, and then put the, the, uh, the screw inside the brass piece, and that was it. And that was week two. Week three consisted of shaping the back uh, portion here of the uh, of the stock the butt plate or the butt portion shape it down get it all flush with the um, with the butt plate and then we also had to uh, inlet and install the trigger assembly and the trigger guard that wasn't hard as well um, all I had to do basically the inletting was done for me um, all I had to do was inlet a little bit more out here because the brass trigger guard wouldn't fit in very well there um, and then that was pretty easy um, week four which was the last part which was the week we just did um, I had to sand I actually had to uh, install the the nose cap here this part was again very easy nose cap all I had to do was drill and tap the holes there and um, fit the nose cap on um, the assignment details didn't say to put the sights on there but I would obviously assume that you know the sites are part of the installation process although for some reason they were never in any assignment details uh, or requirements which is weird um, I know there's another course for this for this muzzle loader which I'll I'll talk about here in just a second but as we're moving forward uh, we have like I said the nose cap here that we had to install and then we had to inlet or not inlet I'm sorry sand the whole entire uh, stock down uh, from 120 all the way up to 400 grit. Now I sand it all the way up to 1500 because I wanted it very smooth for uh, staining and everything. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's really about it. Um, now, as I mentioned, you know this firearm is not complete. It's built. The build is complete, but we still have to stain. We have to take all these parts back off, stain the stock and the ramrod uh, in walnut stain, which will they will be providing us. And we also have to brown the barrel uh, with a browning agent um, and kind of make a, a nice finish there. And then as soon as we do that, then we have to take the stock and finish it with some linseed oil, true oil, something like that to actually give it uh, a nice finish to protect it from the elements. So that's it. That is the whole entire muzzle loader. And again, I'm going to show you functionality. Again, YouTube, this is a clear firearm. Uh, you have your full cock here with the lock. Uh, then you've got your set trigger here, and then you've got your trigger. And that's really about it. So, did I make mistakes? Absolutely. I made plenty of mistakes on this firearm, but that's okay, and I'll tell you why. If you're watching this video and you're building one of these, or if you're in school and building one, one of these and you mess up, it's okay. It's your first one. If it's not your first one, then maybe we need to have a conversation. <laughs> but I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, we all make mistakes, it's okay. But the great, great part about failure and mistakes is what do you do? You learn from them, okay? And because this was my first muzzleloader build uh, where I actually had to inlet stuff and drill and tap stuff, I'm very, very, very um, excited to announce that I'm probably going to buy another one of these and do the same thing, but learn from my mistakes. So, do I think that I could have done a better job? Absolutely. I also believe that I could have done a better job inletting this if I didn't actually inlet it. So what I mean by that is, again, I could have just screwed the screws in and then sanded the wood down to the brass. But again, the teacher wanted us to actually carve out part of the buttstock here to fit it in, which, I, again, I don't, I don't feel like that was needed. But, hey, you know, if the assignment requirements tell you to do something, you got to do something. I'm prior military, and I 
firmly believe in following orders and that was part of the assignment so that's what i had to do so it is what it is um am i saying it's directly the pro the cause of why it did that no i mean i'm sure you could inlet it i've seen videos of people inletting it and, and not turning it out like this but again i was just frustrated because i didn't see why i needed to do it um it just makes more sense to screw the the butt plate on there and then sand the wood down to the brass so you don't have to really install it or you don't have to carve out anything you just got to sand it down so am i going to shoot this firearm yes but not today because i don't want to shoot it without it being stained and finished so i don't ruin the wood here uh, from the black powder um, expelling especially on the the nipple here uh, there'll be a lot of black powder residue over here so i don't want to do that today uh, but this is a complete firearm and it is built now so let me know what you guys think about this. Um, if you want me to do any more videos on this, explain a little bit more in depth how I built this, uh, I definitely will. I apologize for not giving uh, like weekly updates like I said. Um, like I said, this was a very, very, <laughs> this was a very, very hard project. And I, I am very, um, like I said, I'm very proud of it. But at the same time, I know I could have done better. So that also leaves... Uh, you know, some room for improvement. And like I said, that's okay. You're going to make mistakes in life and gunsmiths really and truly excel in trial and error because, you know, your woodworking, your metalworking, your, your fitting parts, your replacing parts, your even manufacturing parts as a gunsmith. So when it comes to all of that, when that's all said and done, you ask any gunsmith that they've ever made a mistake, like a big mistake like that, I guarantee they're going to say they have. So I like my mistake. I do. I'm proud of my mistake because I can learn from it. And honestly, I really don't think it looks that bad. Once I actually stain that, you won't see that discoloration there. And um, I'm not really too worried about it coming off. If the wood putty comes or if the wood filler comes off, I'll just fill it back in. Uh, really not that hard. But that's it, guys. My SDI Traditions muzzleloader build. Now, I will be making another video when I get it completely stained and finished, and that will also be the test fire video uh, for this muzzleloader as well. So thank you all for watching. I hope you don't uh, butcher this video too much with some mean comment. No, I'm just kidding. Um, like I said, I made mistakes. I'm proud of my mistakes because I can learn from them. So I take uh, constructive criticism very well. So even from myself, you know, I got to look in the mirror sometimes and be like, hey, you made a mistake. So... I hope you all have a wonderful day. If you've enjoyed this video, please be sure to slap that like button. If you're new to this channel and want to uh, be up to date on firearms, legislation, firearms reviews, anything to do with firearms, especially the Sonora Desert Institute, which is an online accredited gunsmithing college, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you get notified every time I upload a video. Thank you all for watching. Have a snazzy day. Peace out.